Hello there. How are you, Facebook friends and Periscope friends? You know, I'm really excited to see you all. Thank you for watching this uh, broadcast and joining me. Whether you watch this on the replay or you catch me live, you come in here and you catch me live, I appreciate your time and I appreciate you for joining me. If you don't know me, my name is Tawana V. Smith and I uh, come on Facebook or come on Periscope and how are you? Nice to see you, Mr. Ernie Perry. And I oftentimes will come, hello, Ramala. I will come and talk either about, you know, your business and, you know, marketing your business and your message using video, or I will come on and I will talk to you about, you know, managing your business, managing your life as a mother, uh, as a parent, but really as a mother who has a child with special needs or critical illness. So basically extenuating circumstances, okay? Because that is my past, that's my history. And although I'm very specific about the people uh, that I'm speaking to, which, you know, moms that are dealing with children with special needs, I think that anything that I say or share with you is applicable uh, to anyone who's creating a business who has additional circumstances or where things are hard and things are challenging and you just need tools for managing it. So I want you to do me a favor, you know, whether you are live or whether you watch this, you know, later on today, or you watch this tomorrow, just do me a favor and share this out. Those of you who have shared it out and invited followers already, I super duper appreciate you. I su appreciate your support because my message may not apply directly to you, but it could help someone that is within your circle of influence, someone that you know that could really, you know, benefit from this message. So, you know, that's what it's all about. Sometimes the thing isn't necessarily for us, but we're the conduit for sharing that message with someone else, okay? So, um, you know, what I do really, the thing that I love doing, so some of you know my background where I've worked and done um, digital marketing and social media for brands within the travel space. Uh, and I still love doing that. But what I really love doing is actually taking moms with me who don't really see how they can travel uh, because they have children and really creating experiences for them. And so my business has really kind of transitioned over the years to reflect more of what I needed in my life. And so what I do now is I plan retreats for moms, but I also help coach moms who are really trying to raise a business while they're raising a family because it can be difficult and it's super duper difficult when you have a child that needs a little bit more from you, okay? Like we can all agree that that's not um, an easy road, but it's a harder road when you're not just staying home being mom, when you're trying to manage people and you're trying to manage revenue and you're trying to build a brand and build your name, a name for yourself. And so the best way for me to do that is to share with you how I've done it. So I'll just tell you briefly about my background, um, not my back, back background, <laughs> but like my most recent background, my background as a mom. But if you really want to know my background background, I actually um, started off working on Wall Street. So I started off having a very demanding career as a woman on Wall Street and a young woman on Wall Street. And so I had a lot of stresses at the very, very beginning um, of graduating college. And, you know, I think that that is what kind of prepared me for everything else that was to come because, you know, I had to deal with... Um, a lot of the pressure. And then after that, I kind of went into, um, let's say intelligence analyst, and I won't go any further than that. <laughs> um, but once I had kids, I knew that I did not want to go back into the government. I knew I didn't want to go um, back to Wall Street and that I wanted to spend uh, my time helping to raise them. And so when my first was born, he's 14 years old, I already knew that I wanted to be an entrepreneur and figure out some things that would allow me to be more available to him. So, you know, we're talking about, you know, a minute that I've been um, in that sort of entrepreneurial mindset. But what I didn't know is that it was preparing me for my second child, but not only for my second child, but the um, road, the journey that I would take on with my second child, my youngest who's 10 years old, who was diagnosed with autism when he was two. And then when he was four, he was diagnosed with leukemia. So, you know, we were dealing with autism, leukemia, thank goodness, you know, my husband uh, was still working for the government and that allowed me to just 
take off, although I was working and writing for travel publications and traveling, it allowed me the flexibility to maybe do a little less work, right? So that I could take care of and, and, um, really help raise my youngest son and get him through the autism and get him through the leukemia. I mean, autism, we're still, you know, dealing with autism, but you know, his leukemia is in remission. But when my son started, um, when my son uh, was diagnosed with leukemia, I would say that's when I really started kind of like taking off as a travel writer and writing for USA Today and writing for a travel channel and had all of these, you know, different things that I was doing with my business. So I was building the business at that time. And so when something like that happens for you, where you have to essentially you stop, right? You have to stop for a while because you need to figure out what your flow is going to be, right? You need the things that you did every single day, the schedule that you had every single day when things were normal changes dramatically. So just within the first, you know, you get the diagnosis and that first induction period, which is 30 days, you know, we were pretty much in the hospital, right? I was in the hospital with my son every day for 30 days while he was going through that induction period of cancer. Mind you, what usually happens with um, parents when a child goes through cancer is that one of the parents winds up actually leaving the workforce, right? Leaving the workforce so that they can tend to that. And that is a financial strain. But where we were blessed was that I had the foresight. I don't even know what it was, fate or whatever it was, where I already had a business that I was building at home, right? For myself, which was, like I say, said with uh, for you, was within a travel space writing, um, as well as doing some digital marketing for the brands. And so you actually wind up having to adjust your habits, right? You wind up having to figure out how can I Mm, still manage to make the same amount of money that I was making before, or at least even just say bored. Like you just want to, you don't want to lose money. Maybe it's too much of a demand for you to make more money, but you just want to stay afloat. How do I do this in the midst of, um, chemotherapy appointments, uh, being, um, in the hospital all the time, um, making, uh, other, I don't know, any types of appointments. I felt like we were always in the doctor's office. So your situation might not be so drastic as, you know, maybe cancer or leukemia. It might just be special needs, right? It might just be um, your child is sick. What I hear a lot from moms is, you know, when their child gets sick and it throws them off like a monkey wrench, right? And this is also applicable to you if you yourself wind up getting sick and it comes out of nowhere, right? How do you continue to stay productive? How do you continue to build your business? And the things that I think we, especially moms, right? Or women, we fail to realize is that we have to be agile. We have to be flexible. So that's the first thing is you have to remain flexible. And I think that that is applicable to anyone because life isn't just this. Life isn't just this. Life isn't just this. Life goes like this, right? It's, it is uh, uh, ups and downs, ups and, ups and downs. Sometimes it's like this. Sometimes it's like this. Sometimes it's like this. And so you have to know how do you adapt when there is an up? How do you adapt when there is a down and what you should be doing when things are quiet? Cause this is what I call quiet, right? Like when life is quiet and it's just like this, what should you be doing? right? That's the time when you should be going full throttle. Honestly, in my opinion, when it's going down like this, then you've got to pull back, right? So for me, that looked like, okay, maybe I cannot write as many articles as I was writing when things were like this or when things were like this. Maybe I can't travel as much, which you wind up learning how to adapt. And then when things are quiet, when things got quiet, all right, this is a time for me to ramp up again, right? This is a time for me to make sure that I have, I'm putting out more, um, 
contracts. I'm putting out more proposals. I'm doing more networking. I'm traveling more. Whatever that looks like for you, when things are quiet, you've got to be cognizant of when your life is quiet, right? And what I consider life being quiet is when you're not being pulled in 15 different directions to take someone to uh, some sort of appointment or to deal with someone's illness or to deal with your own illness, right? When you don't necessarily have like five or 10 weddings to attend, when you don't have, you know, funerals to attend, someone in your life past, it could have, you know, been a sibling, it could have been a spouse, it could have been, you know, parent. That's when, you know, life is really, really noisy and you've got to pull back and you're evaluating. You just don't know whether you're going to go left, or you're going to go right. When life is like this and it's quiet, guess what? That means that you need to work faster. You need to work harder because understand that it's not going to stay quiet. So I'm very cognizant of when it's quiet. And I want you to think about that. Like, is my life quiet right now? (laughs) Right? Is it quiet right now? And what does that look like? So if it's quiet right now, maybe I can put in some extra time because when you have a special needs child, you you might feel like it's never quiet. And sometimes I do feel like that. It is never quiet. But life itself as a whole may not be quiet, but there are times of the day when things might be more quiet than when, you know, everyone is there and I'm dealing with the actual uh, um, um, ability of my child, right? So for you, again, you have to apply this to your particular circumstance. So maybe you don't have a special needs child, you know, you just have a child that winds up getting sick. When the child is healthy, guess what? That means you need to go full throttle. Maybe you don't have children, and you still have life that has ups and downs and you're, when your life is quiet, what is the extra stuff? What's, what are the extra things that you could be doing right now, right? Because you f- should feel blessed that is quiet because it's not always going to be that way. So you have to um, be flexible and you also have to give yourself grace. And that's something that I had to learn and I keep um, reminding myself in the process to give myself grace. I'll give you, uh, for instance, you know, today I had no intentions on going live so late in the evening. I really had a schedule of when I wanted to go live, but you know what? I have my circumstances, right? So I have to be flexible with myself and say, you know, it's one as much as, you know, you want to go at a certain time. The reality is, is that Uh, you don't necessarily have typical circumstances. And so it might be a time where you've got to do a little bit more management, right? Like, you know, maybe someone is having a fit. Maybe, you know, they're not able to adjust to something. You know, my son, both my sons, I don't know. My priority is always going to be to them first. And so I've got to manage that. But I also have to give myself grace and not get down with myself because I did not, you know, get to that thing at that particular time. Guess what? life still goes on. And one of the things that you'll know, as long as you communicate what's going on with you, you know, the people that follow you, that support you in your audience, and they're true to you is that they will understand that they're like, okay, yeah, I understand. And everyone knows, Hey, I've got a child with special needs. So when I can be here <laughs> at eight o'clock, like I said, I would be here, then it's a good thing. Things are quiet. But if it winds up being 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, that's just the reality. And so Although I'm talking about it, I'm also showing the reality to people that, hey, even though I can be in a position to talk to you about it and talk to you about my successes, I'm still living that. I I still have those challenges and I'm being flexible and I'm adapting and I'm not just throwing in the hat and saying, okay, I'm just not going to do anything today. I'm saying, okay, I might have to do it later right? Or I might have to do it earlier. So it's being flexible. The second thing um, that you have to be cognizant of and, you know, that you need to do when you're building and managing your business and you have a special needs child, hello from Miami, Orlando, nice to see you, is that, um, and I think this can be applicable to anyone, is that you need to simplify your life, right? Hello. Hey, thank you for inviting followers, Orlando. You need to simplify your life. I think we all need to figure out how can we simplify our lives? We are, gosh, as much as we are blessed with the technology and all of the things that are available to us, I think that the backlash of that is that we're just inundated with too much stuff. We're inundated with messaging and alerts and content and, you know, 
people pulling at us in so many different directions or things pulling at us in so many directions because we have access to them. Imagine when we lived in our little villages and we didn't have cars and we didn't have telephones and we didn't have computers. All we cared about was that thing that was right there in front of us, that village, taking care of ourselves, taking care of our families, having food, having water. And then of course there was commerce between, you know, merchants, between um, gatherers, uh, hunters, farmers, things were simple. Yeah, we didn't have cars and stuff like that. We didn't, we couldn't call people, you know, two villages over, but man, it seems like people took more time to, I don't know, the things that are important. And so sometimes, right? Yeah, Orlando on Periscope is saying third world countries are still like that. And, you know, he's totally, totally right. You know, we sometimes look at these countries and we're saying, oh, poor people, they don't have like phones in their home or they don't have like five computers or they don't have whatever you know what they may do and some of those people are happier than those of us in the modern world who are bogged down with all the stuff right we're bogged down with all the extra stuff that sometimes we don't even have clarity because we just have so much going on right you think about like your social media habits your digital media habits i say this all the time if you're constantly consuming it's hard for you to produce if you're constantly consuming. It's hard for you to sell if you're constantly consuming, if you're constantly buying. So you have to decide for yourself, am I going to be a buyer or I'm going to be a seller? Am I going to be a buyer all the time or I'm going to or am I going to flip the script and be a seller all the time, most of the time, half of the time? You've got to think of that, right? Hello, Doug. Nice to see you, Framble Faces. You have to say, all right, how do I find balance in all of this noise, right? And how do I simplify things? So here in Periscope, um, Orlando says, when you touch somebody person to person, it's much better than a phone. Absolutely. I agree with you. I had the opportunity to do that with friends today that I didn't see for years, you know, showing showing my business. Hello, Doug. So, you know, there's nothing, there is... um, Uh, something to be said about simplifying things and saying to yourself, for instance, okay, a lot of us who are in this digital world, digital world, well, maybe I don't need to be on 10 platforms. Maybe 10 platforms is too much noise. Maybe 10 platforms does not actually help me be productive because I'm pulling myself in so many different ways. And, you know, for me, having a child with special needs, I need less noise in my life. So that means that I really don't have too many notifications on. I I figured that out a while ago, that I need to turn off the notifications because it was just more screaming, more noise, more people pulling at me. Right, like Doug says, more platforms, more platforms. Give us more platforms. Y'all know, can you raise your hand if you agree with me that you don't need another platform in your life? If you just... uh, like if you just stick to one platform i bet you you will be all right okay get facebook alone you got like 20,000 groups <laughs> so you within facebook there's like a gazillion platforms right ramla on periscope says no doug says no no we don't and we don't need to try and keep up with other people it's Especially if you've got children with special needs and they need all of that from you. So simplify things, right? Simplify your life. All right, what do I need to walk away from? What do I need to not do? When do I need to be answering my phone or not answering my phone, right? Like things like that. When do I need to have quiet time and just be reading with my child or reading to myself? Tone it down, take a deep breath and just like try to limit as much noise as possible. Do this today, like go through your phone, right? Like we should all do this. Go through your phone and take inventory of all the apps that you don't use on your phone. I guarantee you, you could probably wipe out one third of the apps on your phone. Like I need to do this. I do this inventory every, you know, every year. (laughs) Like I do like every, you know, what do I not need, right? So I will make sure that, because it's just noise and I don't need the notifications. Um, 
Karen White has nothing on you. I don't know how you do it. You're the superwoman. Doug says that on Periscope. Let me tell you something, Doug. I try not to do be superwoman. I don't want that name <laughs> at all. You can take the cape. I don't want to be superwoman. Really? Because superwoman is too busy saving lives and nobody is saving superwoman. How about that? No, I need to be saved. So I don't want the cape. You can take it iron it do whatever you want to do with it Tawana does not want the cape and so you know I, I I'll give you an example today uh, I had a meeting um and I had a meeting in Baltimore or whatever and Baltimore was like a you know it was like a good 35 minute drive away from me and I was in the kitchen just like you know trying to get the kitchen cleaned up and my oldest son was at a friend's house and he's texting me um Yes. Doug says, thank you, Doug. I appreciate it. He says, yeah, but you have a lot on your plate and you get it done. Exactly. And then there's specific ways that I do that. So my oldest son was texting me. He was like, Hey mom, um, can you pick me up at, you can, no, not can you. He said, you can pick me up at one o'clock. This is 1230. And um, the first thing that came to my head was like, Oh my gosh, it's like 30 minutes. I'm not even like, whatever. I'm going to go pick him up. And then I stopped. Here's where the simplification comes in. So I text my husband, mind you, we're all in the same house. Me and my husband are in the house with my son's at his friend's house. I didn't call downstairs to my husband. I text him, took off my dish gloves, and I was like, hey, can you pick him up at one o'clock, right? Because I was already in the midst of something. And so you have to realize, like, you need to delegate more, right? Some of that simplification means delegate. Like, we both have cars, thank goodness. Go pick him up. I don't need to do it. Uh, yeah, Doug was saying, love that. Can you pick me up now? Exactly. Like, no, <laughs> I'm picking you up right now. And so sometimes too, that simplification means communicating with the people in your lives, putting boundaries, right? Putting boundaries and telling them what you can do and what you can't do, or putting boundaries by delegating and saying, can you take care of this? Well, I take care of that. You know, that could be your spouse. That could be your kids, man. If your kids are walking and talking and their hands are moving, you give your kids tasks and give your kids things to delegate and have them take some of that off of um off of your shoulders right i have my sister in law i love her so much and hello mia redrick how are you those of you in periscope who know the famous fabulous mia redrick she's here on um facebook watching um so you know i have uh, my sister-in-law that i love very much and my sister-in-law she's her two kids and i love it you know she does not like give her kids tasks or things to do she's like wait a minute you your son does his laundry i was like absolutely he does his laundry he's been doing his laundry um for uh, he's 14 at least five years you know at least five years i showed him how to do his laundry uh when my youngest was diagnosed with leukemia because i knew that i had to you know what we have a pretty simple washing machine washer and dryer it's all computerized state of the art all you have to do is put your clothes in there it's one of those that has like the um the detergent in the bottom so it goes through pumps right like it's all automated he doesn't have to measure anything not the stuff that most of us grew up with we had to like measure it and know how much bleach and all that other stuff to put in no all he has to do is put the clothes in the machine close the door and press the cycle the only cycles he's going to be worrying about are colors and whites and most of his stuff is colored and if he puts the white stuff in there okay whatever like you know what i mean like maybe it's just a kid that's white but i taught him how to do it because i needed to take things off my hands i needed to simplify a little bit more so figure out ways that you can simplify whether it's by your own means or by having the people around you helping you with that simplification process right so you know just avoid taking on too much i really can help you Figure out, uh, you know, work on your business when you're doing less stuff in your life, right? So you've got to figure out where you need to delegate in your life so that you have more time for your business, but also in your business so that you have more time 
working on the things that you need to be working on in your business, right? You need to figure out what you need to simplify in it. And then the last point is that you need to be efficient with how you manage your time, okay? So that goes back to some of the things that I was talking about, about, you know, maybe the platforms and social media and not being so engaged in every single platform that, you know, you're on. You know, if you're looking for that human um, connection, maybe you need to come off the platforms. And definitely as a, as a, you know, mom with special needs children, like it's important for us to get together with other moms um, like us who have children that can, you know, be with our children and just have that real world, you know, those touch points versus all of it being online. It just nurtures the soul. Um, it just, you know, we're, I think completely different human beings now that we've got all of this digital media and all the social media. So, you know, one of the things that the, the backlashes of all of this digital media is that it has helped us. It's caused us forced many of us, I should say, to be less productive like truthfully, honestly, and less efficient with our time. Just think about when you turn off your phone and you put your phone down away in another room with no sound on it and you sit down and write or you go and do something else in your house when you don't have the phone, when you don't have the distraction. I'll tell you one thing for me, when I know that I've got a deadline going on, my phone is not in the same room as me. When I know that I need to write an article or a blog post or put in some sort of speaker application or send in a proposal to someone or a pitch to someone, my phone cannot be in the same room as me. My phone actually needs to be upstairs because even though I turn off (laughs) <laughs> the volume and the notifications is still the fact that it's there. I think it's like the energy radioactive. It's not radioactive, but you know what I'm saying? Like the vibe, the energy of it is like calling me saying, pick me up, look at me, scroll through, click on these ga- these different apps and stuff like that. So, you know, figure out what your efficiency looks like, right? Like what helps you to be more efficient? I know that if I write on pieces of paper, like in a notebook like this, this is one of my kids' old notebooks. If I write in the notebook, my content, I get my content done much faster. I know I'm kind of old school, like pen and paper. I love pens and paper. Like I'm just touch, I just like to touch and write that way. It's more free flowing than when I sit at my computer and try to type. It's like, it is so real. Like I am a creative in that way. I've got to touch it. There's it's something to do with like the vernacular system between your brain and your hands where some people function better that way. And so since I know I'm more efficient that way, then I will do that. I'll do the thing that allows me to be um, more efficient that way. Um, so be efficient with how you manage your time and your energy uh, uh, because your children do demand so much of it. So that's why you have to be more efficient where you can be efficient because you need to reserve the rest of that energy and that time for your child with special needs, all right? So, you know, I really hope that this uh, serves you, whether you have a child with special needs or you have a child that, you know, just gets sick once in a while, or even if you don't have a child, I think that there are some nuggets in there that we can all um, take from it when it comes to building and managing our business when you have extra extenuating circumstances, extenuating circumstances of a loved one, right? But particularly a child with special needs, you still can build, you still can manage, but you need to be flexible and give yourself grace. You need to simplify your life and avoid taking on too much. And you need to be efficient with how you manage your time and your energy. So guys, girls, guys, girls, I have a webinar uh, that I'm doing on Friday um, specifically for mothers, right? So, um, but it's, it's not just for moms, but you know, the webinar is how to use travel for respite, self-care and personal transformation. And, you know, some people don't know what respite really means, or they don't know what self-care means or what transformation means. And that's, that is a lot of what I'm going to be talking about on this webinar. I don't really want to call it a webinar. I want to call it a meeting of minds, but you know, because everyone understands the term webinar, we'll just call it webinar. And I put the link in the title of 
um, this broadcast, uh, both on Periscope as well as on Facebook. So do make sure that you check that out and it's bit.ly slash mom respite and sign up for it. And even if you're not going to be available at that time on Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, signing up for it will get you the replay, right? It'll get you in the email list so that you can get the replay and you can learn what we're going to talk about, you know, because really it can be difficult for um, many of us women, many of us moms to just kind of go out and travel to seek personal transformation or to get, you know, respite or to have our self-care. But that is truly, truly the tool that I use that helped me to manage uh, raising my son uh, while he was going through the leukemia, but still able to like do the business. There was just a, a, a power in the travel that people don't necessarily understand. And Orlando, who was here on uh, Periscope, he talked about, you know, third world countries. I wouldn't say necessarily third world countries, but some of these smaller countries like Costa Rica was, you know, one of the destinations that really kind of helped me. So I'm going to talk about some of my favorite destinations um, that I've traveled to that helped to, um, that really helped me on the path of personal transformation. The ones that I've been to, ones that I know about. So I'm going to share some of those um, with you. I'm also going to uh, share with you some of my best practices and organizational processes and tools for managing, you know, what some moms have as mom guilt. And, you know, I'll talk about that. So it'll be a fun meeting of minds or webinar, whatever you want to call it on Friday at 12 p.m. And that's bit.ly slash mom respite. So I do hope that you do sign up and, you know, you show up, but at least sign up so that you can get the replay and, you know, let's figure out how we can help you to build and manage your business. Whether you, you know, you have a child with special needs or, you know, you have a child that's uh, developed, has a critical illness, it, it's possible. And I'm here to tell you and show you it's possible using a tool like travel. So please do share this with uh, someone that you know, someone that you love, someone that you care about that has those circumstances, even if that's not you. All right. So I appreciate each and every one of you for coming on and watching me for the last 30 minutes. And you know, you're watching this on the replay on um, Facebook. You can always leave a comment and on Periscope. If you're like, you know what, that was a great thought. I didn't get to say that in the comments. You can always tweet tweet at me at Tawana B. Smith, or if you want to go to my Facebook page, it is Mom's Guide to Travel um, on the Facebook page and leave a comment there. Again, everyone, I so appreciate you. Thank you for watching here on Facebook. I'm going to end it with my lovely outro video. 